Welcome. My name is Emmanuel from Titec Consulting. In this video, I will give you a, a quick overview on system security plan. The system security plan is one of those important documents in the RMF that you need to pay attention to. Now, as a compliance analyst, information security analyst, you need a good grasp of what an SSP is. There is no way you can escape that, either during interview session, in the CAPS um, exams, or on the job. You will definitely come across SSP because it's one of those important security documents in the risk management framework. It's one of those documents that makes up the authorization package. So that is why the SSP is important. Now, according to NIST 800-18 Revision 1, that is the NIST publication that guides in how to develop SSP. So in this short video, I want to give you a quick overview of the different contents and components or section that makes up an SSP. Okay, let's get started. Objective of an SSP. So let's look at the objective. The objective of system security plan is to improve protection of information system resources, which means all federal systems have some level of sensitivity and requires protection as part of the good management practice. The protection of a system must be documented in a system security plan. The completion of the system security plan is a requirement by OMB Circular A130. So what this objective is saying is that every system in every government agency must be protected and that protection has to be documented and it has to be documented in the system security plan. So let's look at the purpose of SSP. The purpose of SSP is to provide an overview of the security requirements of the system and describes the controls in place or planned for meeting those requirements. The system security plan is plan also delineates responsibilities and expected behaviors of all individuals who accesses the system. Now the system security plan should be viewed as a documentation of structured process of planning adequate, cost-effective security protection for a system. It should reflect input from various managers with responsibilities concerning the system, including information owner, the system owner, and some senior agency information security officers. So let's look at some of the um, maybe responsibilities regarding developing SSP. So first of all, agencies should develop policies on the system security plan process, which means every government agency must have a policy on how to develop system security plan. Now, system security plan are living documents that requires periodic review, modification, and plans of action and milestone for implementing security controls, which means SSP is a living document. As a living document, so it outlives the system itself. As a living document, it has to be continuously updated. As changes happen on the physical system, it has to be updated in the SSP. Now, procedures should also be in place outlining who should review the SSP and uh, keeping the SSP current and follow up plans on the security controls. The agency should have that, you know, those procedures. And also procedures should require that SSP be developed and reviewed prior to proceeding to the certification and accreditation of the information system, meaning before an SSP is finally reviewed. Now, every step in the RMF must be documented in the SSP before the system is issued an ATO. So every system, before an ATO is issued to every system, SSP is a requirement before that ATO is issued. 
Now, let's look at some of the major contents or sections in the SSP. These sections or these contents, you have to be familiar with them. And one of them is the system name and identifier. So the first item listed in the security plan is the system name and identifier. According to OMB Circular A-11, each system should be assigned a name and unique identifier. Assignment of a unique identifier supports the agency's ability to easily collect information and security metrics specific to the system as well as facilitate complete traceability to all requirements related to the system implementation and performance. Another major content or section in the SSP is the system categorization. It says each section, each system identified in the agency system inventory must be categorized using FIPS 199 and NIST 860. So the categorization of each system must also be documented in the SSP. Another content or section in the SSP is the system owner. It says a designated system owner must be identified in the system security plan for each system. This person is the key point of contact for the system and is responsible for coordinating system development lifecycle activities specific to the system. So you need the system owner's name, title, phone number, email address. Another component or section in the SSP is the authorizing official. An authorizing official must be identified in the SSP for each system. This person is the senior management official who has the authority to authorize operation of an information system, either a major application or a general support system. This person also accepts the residual risk associated with the system. Another major content or section in the SSP is other designated contacts. This section should include the names of other key contact personnel who can address inquiries regarding system characteristics and operations. And then we have assignment of security responsibilities, such as the names of the ISSO, SAISO responsible for that system. Another content or section in the SSP is the system operational status. This section details is the system in operation, is the system undergoing development, or is the system undergoing major modification? It has to be documented in the SSP. Another major content or section in the SSP is information system type. This section is where you indicate if the system is a major application or a general support system. And then we have the general description purpose. This is another major content or section in the SSP. General description or purpose. It says prepare a brief description of the function and purpose of the system. And then we have system environment. Under the system environment, that is where you indicate, is this a standalone or small office environment? Is this a major or an enterprise, you know, large environment? Or is this a legacy environment where you have old system? This has to be documented under the system environment section. And then we have the system interconnection slash information sharing section. System interconnection is the direct connection of two or more IT systems for the purpose of sharing information resources. An interconnection security agreement, ISA, Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, or Memorandum of Agreement, MOA, is needed between systems that shares data that are owned or operated by different organizations. So this is another major section in the SSP. And then we have laws, regulations, and policies affecting the system. It says under this section, that is where you list the laws, regulations, either federal or the organization laws, standards relating to this particular information system. And then we have the security control section. The security control section, you must have the title of the security control, 
how many security control is being implemented or planned to be implemented, any scoping guidance that has been applied, and what type of consideration. Also, under the security control section, you have, you have to indicate if the security control is a common control or if it's a system-specific control or if it's a hybrid control and who is responsible for the implementation of the control. Now, let me digress a bit. Common controls are the controls that have the capacity to secure multiple systems at a time. System-specific control has the capacity to secure just you know, one information system at a time. Hybrid control are the control that has the characteristics of both common control and system-specific control. And then another major content or section in an SSP is the completion and approval dates. The completion and approval date of the security plan should be provided. The completion date should be updated whenever the plan is periodically reviewed and updated. And then lastly, we have ongoing system security plan maintenance section. So once the information system security plan is developed, it is important to periodically assess the plan, review any changes in system status, functionality, design, and ensure that the plan continues to reflect the correct information about the system. So these are the 15 major content or section in an SSP that you need to get familiar with as a compliance analyst. Lastly, before um, we end this video, let me share with you some likely job interview questions relating to SSP. Now, here are the questions. They might ask you, at which RMF step is the SSP initiated? It is at the categorization step. At which RMF step is the SSP approved? It is at the selection of security control step. What is the NIST publication for developing SSP? NIST SP 800-18, revision 1. How many components or sections makes up an SSP? About 15 components, which we just looked at now. Who approved the SSP? Authorizing official. How many pages is your SSP document? You can tell them about 150 pages. So these are the, this is a quick overview of the SSP. These are the things you need to pay attention to, you know, in a typical SSP. Now, time will not permit me to share with you the, the, uh, a, a real template of an SSP. This is what I do for my students. I share with them a real template of an SSP. We develop the template in class. We complete the template. And it makes it real as if you are in a real working environment. Thank you for listening to this video, for watching this video, and I hope to you know, upload more videos as time goes on. Thank you very much, and I hope you find this very useful and important.